The seasons are changing and when summer comes, all that hard-earned meat, fruit and vegetables are going to rot and spoil and you'll have nothing left to feed your villagers. So let's change that. What's going on guys? I've been playing a lot more of Go Medieval since my initial review. I'll link that down below if this is uh, completely new to you. But as you start to progress, you hit different issues that aren't as easy to solve as you would expect. This is a sandbox game, so the tutorial only gets you so far, and then you do have to kind of just trial and error, test things, and work your way around the problems. So this is one that I hit that I wasn't too sure how to solve, and I wanted to make a video just to help you all out. So as you start to progress through the different seasons, you're going to hit summer and winter, which can be quite challenging in this game. The first thing you hit, summer, is a real difficulty because as the temperatures rise, your indoor storage gets super hot. Any food you've got stored in there will start to spoil and rot. You've got animal carcasses in there. They're just going to spoil any like fruit and vegetables. They're just going to rot within a few days. So you're, you're, you're going to be in a real pickle where your villagers are getting hungry and you just can't forage fast enough to keep up with the food supply. And no matter how good your above ground storage is, the heat will rise. So you need to go underground to lower that room temperature and extend the life of your food. So let's talk about building the underground storage. I'm gonna break it down into steps and keep it as simple and easy to follow as possible. So the first thing you wanna do is click the mine tool. It's like the second from the right on the bottom. Um, and then you wanna pan out a section of ground where you're gonna build your storage room. You don't need to keep this near any buildings. It can be off on its own. It can be next to a building, it really doesn't matter, but make sure it's big enough to store all the food you're gonna need. You can check your current storage to see how much food is in there and then build it to take on all that plus a bit more maybe. But make sure it's big enough you, there's nothing else that goes in there so the squares you pan out are where uh, can all be turned into storage but yeah don't mind too much it just take a long time but again make sure you've got enough second just mentioned that it just take a long time so make sure you assign people to mining to get this done quickly one miner to, to do the section that i'm showing on screen now would have taken around 10 days to do this little tiny square this little tiny rectangle it's incredibly slow i put three people on it and it still took a few days like three people to prioritize mining and it still took a few days to get this section panned out. So make sure you have enough people on this to get it done. If it's the start of summer, get everyone on it. If you've got like a long build up for summer and you're doing this in advance, then just have one guy and get him doing it every day, I guess. But just make sure you, you get it built out in time is my, my suggestion. You can see here it's the very start of summer. So I had everyone trying to get this done instantly. Step three, what you want to do is once it's dug out, you want to create wooden flooring down there on the underground floor. So you don't just want to store your food on the floor. This goes for all storages, really, because they will degrade faster. So make sure you put wooden flooring all along the bottom of this dugout storeroom. If you've got a spare villager, just get them chopping trees from now because you're going to need a lot of trees for what we're going to be doing. So, yeah, get them chopping the trees because you're going to need... It, it, the, the wood consumption is quite high because it's the, each little tile is quite small, but we do need to build a lot of different things there. So, yeah, make sure you've got a good wood supply or a good lot of wood in your storage. Make sure you've also got a staircase because they're going to need to be able to get down there to place the wooden floor and to eventually place the storage stuff down there. So step four, assign food storage. So go to the storage option and highlight all of this ground as storage, same way you would a normal storeroom at the start of the game. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to click on the storage and you can assign what gets stored down there. <clears throat> and you want to store food and carcasses. That way, fruit, meat, and vegetable go down there, but also any dead animals, so they don't spoil before you have the chance to butcher them into meat. Next thing you want to do is go to your actual storeroom that you're moving from and unhighlight food and carcasses. And that way, your villagers will move any food products and any animal carcasses from the one you've disallowed and into the underground storage. Now, fourth, as you can probably see, all your food is open to the elements. So it's, it's if it rains, if there's any problems, everything's going to get down into your, your food storage. So what you want to do is cover it with a roof or a floor. I just put another floor tile on the top. So the same thing you put on the bottom, but on the top to seal it all off, all the way up to the staircase. Now, again, that's why you need so much wood, because you're doing another big piece of, of wood placing. And the, another issue here is because you're placing wood, because it's not a roof, it's just a floor, and you're just placing it randomly without any walls, there's no support. So what you need to do is you need to place the, uh, the supports all the way along your underground storage. So maybe like every, every three tiles, place a wooden beam, and that way your, your wooden roofing, floor, roofing floors will be supported and they'll have structural you know, integrity of three or above. So there's no worry of them just collapsing. If you don't do this, there's a worry that the ones in the middle that aren't near the ends are just going to fall through or not even allow you to be built in the first place. 
And that's it. You should have a fully sealed underground food storage where your villagers will take the food as a first priority. What you want to do now is just go in there and click a piece of food that's down there and see what the temperature. So if you go on it, you'll see it's, uh, it's degrading as normal. And you can click on the uh, you can click on how fast it's degrading and it will tell you the temperature of the room it's in. So you just want to make sure you've built it right because there could be something you've missed or there could be some problem with yours that it's not working properly. So go in there and check the temperature. I think in the underground storage that you see on screen, the first one I built, it was like 10 degrees underground. And then above ground in the story I had next to it, it was 20 degrees. I think for reference, a modern day fridge keeps food at like five degrees. So, you know, this is much better than, than having it out in the open. Um, I think the further underground you go is cooler, but I haven't checked that out yet. This is, this is by far enough to keep the food protected until you're going to use it though. Summer's only one season and the, the food lasts a month underground fine or until you need it at least. And unless you're storing food for like five months and you're, you, you know, you're planning for some sort of apocalypse, then you might need a big deep underground storage vault. But, but generally this will keep you going for a long time. I'm a few years in and this has done me fine for every season. So yeah, hopefully this has helped. If this tip video has helped, drop a like on the video. Let me know in the comments if there's something I've missed here. Subscribe to the channel if you like medieval games because I cover them all the time. And if there's, if there's a, some sort of guide for this game that you want to know or there's something that you're not sure of, drop it in the comments and I can always make a video on it because I'm playing a lot of this game. I've got a lot recorded, so I'd happily make more guides if people want them. Other than that, guys, thanks so much. Take care and catch you in the next one.